nothing. You learnt nothing. Rita was standing there and you didn't even ask. It's called sensitivity. Uselessness, more like. Are you not concerned? Oh, concern? That's how you characterise your interest, is it? Of course. I want to offer Rita the benefit of my wisdom. I doubt Rita would have much to say right now. I could tell her how to spot a pervert at ten paces. I knew he were a wrong un. Well, you kept it to yourself. He wasn't courting me. Happen I were too old for him. Sixty years too old. <sighs> how was Rita anyway? Now, is this really all we've got to talk about? Backstreet tittle-tattle? I mean, there is a world at the end of this terrace. Turn left or right, you won't miss it. Ken! I'm sorry. But if you're going to spend your days endlessly talking about other people's affairs, talk about somebody interesting with something important to say. Like the directors of your subtitle smut, you mean? Or some idiot who turns a urinal on its end and calls it art? Not in this house. No, not in this house. You've got grandkids. The thought of a pedophile walking the streets is of more importance to this family than anything Melvin Bragg has to say for himself. Oh, I'm taking the dog for a walk. Come on. Hello, Emily. Oh, Eureka. Why are you taking your camera to the one o'clock club? It's the bank holiday outing, our annual mystery tour. Come along. We're visiting a smashing place. I thought it was a mystery tour. Oh, it was. But the last time, Ethel Caradus had a stroke. Doesn't pay to surprise people on the wrong side of 80. So where are you going, anyway? One of the biggest open spaces in Manchester. There's history, poetry, and a sprinkling of celebrities. Sounds nice. Where is it? Are you coming? Well, oh, I suppose I've nothing else on. You won't regret it. It's a guided tour of Southern Cemetery. Who needs Disneyland, eh? Though I can't help wondering if it's worth some of the older girls getting back on the coach. Do you fancy it? Uh, no, no, I've uh, got to pick out some books I reserved and they won't hold on to them any longer. Oh, well, come on then, love. We don't want to miss this sharabang. Bye. Are you OK? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a bit tired, that's all. Anyway, goodbye, love, and I uh, hope you have a nice afternoon. <laughs> I am coming back, you know. I'll see you at tea time. Mini Kiev's all right. Come on, then. Are you sure there's going to be room for me? Oh, hi. So, no. I'll put the kettle on. No, it's all right, I'll do it. You know, I'd have thought I'd have found the famous ones most interesting, but I didn't. It was the... the supposedly anonymous souls. <laughs> Although, what's the difference, eh? You're born, you try to do your best, you die. It doesn't matter if you're a Lowry or a Barlow. There'll be all manner of milliners and shop girls lined up in there. Insurance clerks, bus conductors, hairdressers. We'll all be just bones at the end of the day. We're nearly out of tea bags. But take me through the horizons. I said, I'll broaden your horizons, mate. And that was the last you said about it. I mean, I'm going back sort of 20 or 30 years, maybe more. Irony is, flights are even cheaper yeah. these days. Doris Alcock said her nephew paid three pence for a one-way ticket to Marbella. Oh, I say. I tell you who else chipped in. Your Ken, who were propping the bar up there, said, why didn't I see more of the world? Oh, that's a laugh. Where's Ken ever been? Uh, well, he did go to America once, in fairness, but when Bush comes to shove, he's not that yeah. strong, really. Did I tell you about our Gordon? He applied to go on Countdown. <laughs> Pink up, Mother. Remember? Tea bags. Oh. Tea bags. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Betty. Bye, Take care, Blanche. Bye. 28p, though, for a banana. That's nearly six shillings. I don't know. He gets away with it. Cos he knows we can't be faff going to fresh goals every time. Don't even like bananas that much. Oh, now she tells me. Although, you know where you are with a banana. 
Not like these so-called super fruits they have now, like blueberries. We never had blueberries as kids, and we were fit as fleas. I'd never even heard of them till a couple of years ago. No, me. I mean, where did they come from? In fact, we got through the war without any foreign fruit at all. Well, don't stand there gawping. Get the kettle on. We're gagging. Forty change. Cheers, pups. Has to use her knees more. Now, of course, her knees have gone as well. Who's this? Madge Truitt, on the cemetery trip. She'd have gone to the doctors today. But it's another blooming bank holiday. What do you mean, blooming? We've only just had Easter. Now, two bank holidays this month. Who thought that up? There we are. It's only frozen chicken, Kiev, I'm afraid. Oh, what's to be afraid of? Well, I know Ken's not keen. <laughs> chicken Kievs are fine. Oh, that's a first. You usually get a lecture about processed food. Oh, can I have Spot the Celebrity on tonight, then? What? If you're feeling charitable. You normally want to watch the educational channels. You can have on what you like for me. And you won't complain all the way through? Won't breathe a word. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, Betty was saying earlier you didn't quite look yourself today. You're not sickening for something, are you? I'm absolutely fine. <laughs> That's the news. The world's still spinning round. Just. I can sleep easy for another night. Oh, I don't suppose I'll be so long after you. I'm worn out. Now. Do I need a hot water bottle? Oh, it may. You wait till you've got an artificial hip. No, I think I'll be all right. Night, anyway. Sleep well, Mother. Yeah, night, Blanche. See you in the morning, if I'm spared. You've not had very much to say for yourself tonight. <sighs> A bit tired, that's all. Shall I fix your whiskey? No, I'm fine, really. Well... It won't do you any harm if you are coming down with something. Anyway, what good is a wife if she can't offer a bit of TLC every now and again? I think I'm going to have one myself as well. That's not like you. Well, I think I'm trying to remind myself I'm still alive after that trip to the cemetery. <laughs> there you go. Going to run a nice hot bath and sip it in there. Actually... You could, um, come and scrub my back if you fancied it. And Mother will be fast asleep. It'll just be you and me. They call this whole milk. So where's the cream? Morning, love. Morning. When you got it in bottles from the milkman, there were cream on the top. We're being robbed. Oh, Mother, there hasn't been cream on the top for years. Not even when we got it in bottles. Anyway, we stopped deliveries because you complained we'd all get bird flu from the blue tits pecking through the bottle tops. Still doesn't explain why there's no cream on this so-called whole milk. You want me to go and get you some cream? No. You know what it does to me, bowels. Then what? Hey, don't let it get to you. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, fine. Just didn't sleep very well, that's all. Yeah, how did you get up? Yeah, I came down and made a drink. Bad dreams? Something like that. I'm just, uh, ringing to find... Have you seen anything of the paper, boy? Chesney, this time, I've been school. Morning. I don't know what's happened to your paper. Uh, not to worry. Right, you ready for the off? Just about. You could call at the cabin and see why Ken's paper hasn't been delivered. No, there's no need. I'll go myself. Why does it always have to be the Guardian? Why can't you buy something that we can all enjoy? You know, a bit of gossip. Which actress is having an affair with a married man? That sort of stuff. You try to be funny. Yeah, somehow I can't see your dad with one of those red top rags. Oh, I don't know. My dad's not averse to a bit of scandal. Hey, Dad. Not what it ends up with people being needlessly hurt. You can drop me at the precinct. Yes, my lady. Right. Have a nice day. Bye. Oh, morning, Eileen. They should not let menopausal women work in charity shops. Facial hair, excessive sweating, and totally unreasonable to poor pensioners.
Would someone care to tell me what's going on? Not really, no. That, Mother, is my husband's farewell note. Or being can, it's more of a long letter. So, you're off, are you? To join your trollop? He's not a... No. He did actually leave, but <laughs> lucky me, he came back. I didn't notice he'd gone. And now he wants a fresh start. Clean slate. Typical man. You've had your fun, and now you're back with your tail between your legs, saying sorry, it were all a big mistake. At your age, you should have had him done years ago. Blanche, let me just remind you that this is my house. Oh, and uh, let me just remind you that it wouldn't be for much longer, not if I took this letter to a solicitor. OK. We'll say no more about it. Sorry? He wants chucking in the gutter. See if he can find his morals. I don't want to hear any mention of any of this ever again. Thank you. I don't know who disgusts me more. Him or you for allowing him to get away with it. Look, it's all over and done with. I don't want to hear another word. I'm just and saying... And if that doesn't that... suit you, you can go. Hey, I'm not having you telling me what I should and shouldn't do anymore. If you can't keep your mouth shut, you can get out. Well, that's nice. He's the one who's made a fool of you, yet I'm the one sent back in. I'm sure Deirdre didn't mean it. You'd see your own mother on the street just to save your pathetic sham of a marriage. See, this is exactly why I want you out. Because you won't be able to help yourself going on and on about it. You just can't sweep all this under the carpet. It'll eat away at your will, this, like a horrible cancer. Oh, mother, will you please shut up? Right. That's it, then. Go and get me that suitcase from upstairs. The one with wheels. Got a bit lost there. Can I make you a cup of tea? Just had one, thanks. Is my bag in here? Ah. Won't get far without it. I can't believe it's come to this. All I did was try to defend my own daughter. Look, this is the last thing I wanted, you two falling out. And please! Can we discuss this like civilised human beings? All right. Off on your holidays? Yes. I'm going to hell in a handcart. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> You always made it yourself, have you? Well, I've not so much made it as, you know, defrosted it. <laughs> or, I mean, if you like, we could always just skip the food. Hello. I hope you're decent. I've left my case at the bottom of the stairs. You can go in the bunk bed with Simon, and I'll have your bed. Well... <laughs> What's happened? You'll need to put clean sheets on, though. Terry toweling if you've got it. Um, shall I just... Uh... No, j uh, just hang on a minute. Blanche, I... What's going on? You can be proper gormless at times. Deirdre's chosen her philandering two-timing husband over me. Chuck me out, she has. Oh, you're joking. Went round to my friend Nora's. Thought I might stay there. She's a fiend for the great outdoors. Wore the legs off me, she did. Think I'm getting dropsy? Yeah, uh, I'll just leave you to it. Yeah, look, uh, Michelle, I'm, Michelle, I'm so sorry. Just I'll, I'll see you at work, yeah? Yeah, see ya. So, 
How long are you planning on staying? For the duration. What's for tea? This a newspaper. It's frightening what some folk will read. Then don't. Simon, come in here and finish your breakfast, please. Come in. Got him well trained, I see. Oh, I don't know how you sleep in that bed of yours. I've been in agony all night. Well, you know, first off, Blanche, I don't normally do much sleeping. Oh, now what kind of breakfast is that to give a growing lad? Claire says that the key to peak physical conditioning is balanced nutrition. Oh, does she? That girl's flaming body. Might as well give the lad sawdust and have done. It's healthy and filling. Notice there's nought about tasty in that description. You wait, love. Tomorrow, Granny Blanche will make you a nice big fry up. Wow, can she, Dad? Yes, we'll see. Okay, go brush your teeth, good lad. You promised me you were going to be on your best behaviour. You get to my age, you make a lot of promises. Come on, pet. Let's see if we can't buy your bacon butty on the way to school. To winner then. Lagger at eight to one. Blimey, you're feeling a bit daring, aren't you? When you get to my age, you can do with a bit of excitement in your life. <laughs> you take the biscuit. You really do. First you invade my home, and then you undermine me in front of my son, and now you're monopolising my only member of staff. Leave her alone! Now, you see what I have to put up with? Don't you play hard done by, Blanche. It won't wash. You've made your own bed and you stole mine. She had nowhere else to go. Well, whose fault's that? He'd have me grovelling at his feet if he could. Peter, you can't just turn your back on her. Oh, no, you're too right I can't. She's already got you wrapped round her little finger. I don't know. I mean, I wish I'd have never got involved in the first place. I must be crazy. Talk about a flaming turkey voting for Christmas. Are you finished now? Yes. Good. Right, so why don't I make you a nice brew downstairs? Oh, sounds smashing. I noticed they've opened a new bookies near the arcade. Oh, really? Any good? Oh. Tear up, why don't you? A very upmarket. They have these huge televisions. Marvels they are. You can almost smell the horses. Must be viewing in high death. Oh, whoopie do. And you get free beverages. So do you. Theirs are worth drinking. Oh, and the chairs. Comfortable? Smashing. You'd happily expire in one. <laughs> Fat chance of that. <laughs> Splash the cash, matey. One hundred fat ones. Well, you've not won again. One thirty at Chepstow. This is unreal. Oh, you were so jammy. Lucky in life, unlucky in love. Mm, is that right? Nah, I'm just trying to cheer Pete up. I'm practically baiting them off. Really? Well, I'll tell you what. Go and buy yourself a nice new hat. Go with that big head of yours. I'd prefer to buy you dinner. Behave. Afternoon, Branch. Save your breath. I'm not setting foot back in that house until Deirdre's apologised, and that's an end to it. Oi, over here, Romeo. Let's see if you can't buy me a new life of luxury. I certainly need one. Anything for you, Duchess? One night, and she's already doing me, Eddie. Climbing the flaming wall. Sorry, but I'm not sure what else I can do. I mean, Deirdre won't back down either. It's a classic impasse. Yeah, it's a classic summit, all right. Have you got any idea the kind of effect this might have on Simon? No. No, neither have I, and it scares me to death. Well, I'm sure it'll only be for a few days. Peter, you best get yourself back in here. Blanche and Luca going halves is on a 12 to 1 outside. If ever there was a woman to drive you to drink. Hey, that's not even remotely funny. Hey, relax, yeah. I was thinking about antifreeze. Why are we doing this? Go supporting your local community. Huh? Hey, Blanche, what do you keep giving him this rubbish for? It's called supporting your local shop. Full of preservatives and e-numbers in these. Which is why it's tasty. What's a preservative? Just means it makes it last longer, mate. Can you name one? Formaldehyde. Are you all right? You look a bit...
bit zapped. Just nervous. I hate public speaking. Oh, don't sweat it. The art will do the talking. I must say, I'm surprised you're here. I didn't think this would be your scene. Are you kidding? Justin's a legend at college. Everything's set. Let's do this. Okay. Good luck. Amber, I wish... Hey, listen, have a drink. Really, really nice to see you here. I wish today would never end. Enjoy the show. Thank you so much for coming. What you're about to see is a defining moment in my life. It's a statement. And Justin Turner has harnessed his incredible vision to create a single and perfect image of truth in all its ugly glory. Hey, she's got the patter, I'll give her that. And it's particularly fitting that this first view is held in a community where Dev, who has quite literally been my inspiration, is so respected and admired. What's going on? Oh, no. Apologies for the interruption, but before we continue, I would like to introduce another work of art. Tara Mandal, everybody. Let's give it up for this fantastic lady. <laughs> now, like any great work, she has beauty and depth, and she can inspire, fill your heart, and take you places you've never dreamt before. She is the Mona Lisa come to life only better looking. No offense at Da Vinci. <laughs> You're gonna need that, babe. Damn. My world was empty before I met you, Tara. It's blank canvas. Become my wife. Make it a masterpiece. I'm sorry, but I don't deal in fakes. that you think I'd actually marry you. What? I feel like Brillo patting in the eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me. With my arthritis, I can barely peel a satsuma. Hey, Dad, nothing to be ashamed of from where I'm standing. If you're going to do a calendar, put me down for one. Factory girls would love it. <laughs> We should call me dot dogs now. That's it. One picture of him, Starkers, and we're done. It's not terribly flattering either, is it? No. Well, the gallery is called No Wall Painting. Odd way to propose, if you ask me. Oh, well, he's always been odd. Bob. Sounds good to me. Actually, uh, me and Michelle were going to take Simon for the pizza. Yeah! Right. Maybe see you later, then? Good. I love a pizza, especially them salad bars. I have a very funny anecdote, green beetroot. 
can't look at the stuff without smiling. Oh, no, I know. Beetroot, Blanche. Opens the floodgates for lots of us, that. Anyway, listen, we should go back to the flat, get your coat, because it might get cold later, OK? You're getting a cold. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I can see it. You'll wake up in the morning, you'll have a cold. What's this? Is it some kind of voodoo curse? It's <laughs> all Here, what's, uh, what's all the hoo-ha? <laughs> hoo-ha doesn't even cover it. A man had his nuddies out on a massive picture. <laughs> he did, yes. Dev no less nuddies. Uh, Dev? Nuddies you are? Him. Starkers. Twenty foot high. They were like something out of the Kama Sutra. Oh. I can't believe you missed it, Norris. Yeah, are you slow? <laughs> I wanted tic tacs. <laughs> I just want a quick. So, Saturday night, yeah? Yeah, brilliant. Listen, mate, I owe you one. Now, yeah, cheers. Question. Whose assassination was said to be the cause of World War One? The Archduke Ferdinand. Right. Uh, sorry, Blanche. I've got a dash. I've got this gig of rhymes to get to. Hey, listen. Thanks again for babysitting, yeah? I know this one. I saw it in the film. The Archduke Ferdinand. Come here. No, Blanche, I've... I've... This will only take a sec. I've got an image of Peter Houston off in my head. I don't know why. I'll have to hurry you. The Archduke Ferdinand, you stupid woman. He looked nothing like Peter Houston off. It's a funny-looking thermometer, this. It's rectal, but it's been through the dishwasher. And, and they went and won a whacking great motorhome. Then this young piece of Norris's goes and parks it outside Emily's, if you please. Rita, oh. thank you, love. You walked past at the wrong time of the morning and you could see a silhouette of her giving herself a stand-up wash. Would you like me to walk you home? No, I'm fine, I think. Mind? It's one way of avoiding council tax, I suppose. <laughs> Did you not get a round in? Oh, Blanche, please. Could you stop wittering on? Rita's had a terrible shock. Oh, pardon me for breathing. Uh, no pun intended. Blanche. Well, we all knew what it was. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm intruding. Don't be daft. Uh, well, it's... Rita's clearly lost someone very special. You do need catching up. Maybe I will go home. I'll come with you. No, really. Thank you. I'd rather be on my own. Well, you will call. Yes. It... I will. Thank you. So, here you go. You can go back to the flat if you like. Simon's at a sleepover at Josh's. You'll have the place to yourself. What? I, I miss all the action here? No fear. Norris has long lost brothers turned up, and that pedo's kicked the bucket. It's all go. Red wine, please, Steve. And a pint of bitter, please. Oh, thought you were a half man. <laughs> well, you said it. All oh, right, just a little joke. Drink, Peter? Oh, God, no. I mean, I like orange juice as much as the next man, but after your third. Um, I think we should join Emily. Are you hoping I'll make up with my mother? Well, it's going to happen eventually. Please, Deirdre, I'm begging you, please make up with your mother. I thought you liked living with you. Do you think that's Norris's brother that Emily mentioned? So Blanche said, yeah. Oh, perhaps we could just join them for one. Do you mind uh, if we join you? Yeah? Oh, no, no, of course not. Um, Ramsey, uh, this is Ken and Deirdre Blanche's daughter. Oh. <laughs> and a terrible disappointment. I'm a terrible disappointment. You try having a till of the hon for a mother and see how you do. Please, both of you. We just heard that Eileen's father passed away. A little respect. <laughs> not that I get much. Oh, no. Poor Eileen. When's the funeral? I I'll have to get the day off work. Well, I, I don't know. It just happened a couple of hours ago, I believe. Yeah, it's a terrible time for a family, funerals. Please. I've been to more funerals this year than you've had hot dinners. 
I'm sorry to hear that. Oh, you needn't be. There were nobody she knew. She just likes going to random funerals. So, you're having her go at me hobbies now, are you? Well, she's a strong woman, is Eileen. Only have to go an hour or two out of Sydney to see some of the most breathtaking terrain on the planet. The Blue Mountains, for example. Yes, I've heard of those. Big surprise. Oh, the whole enormous range covered with eucalyptus trees, and they give off this uh, incredible blue haze you can see for miles. Yes, I, I imagine that the smell must be wonderful. Yeah. Must be a truly majestic experience. I wonder if it's like it is in Virginia. You know that Laurel and Hardy song? Oh. In the Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia, on the trail of the lonesome pine, in the pale moonshine, marks and twine. Well, we we uh, 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 oh, this looks very cosy, I must say. Uh, why don't you join us, Sir uh, Norris? Should I go after him? No, oh, I, I think I should, but I think I shall need this sherry first. Oh, oh. Everything all right? Yeah, I'm just uh, just helping Blanche down the stairs. Where's Simon? Uh, Deirdre's taking him to the Science Museum. Oh. Not gone with him, then? No, no, uh, no I, had, I had things I needed to do. There are another reason you should move back home. Rubbish. We can always get a stair lift. I've been pricing them up. And if it's going to be a permanent arrangement, she'll need one. And they're not cheap. Still, I'm worth it, don't I? Now I've had a quick tidy. Oh, and I've made your casserole for your lunch. Put it in that slow cooker thing of yours. Oh, good, lovely. <laughs> Maybe she is worth it after all. Mind, I suppose you're thinking the same thing. Just you and Deirdre now, rattling around together. Got your paper. Oh, I already know what's in it. I don't know why I bother. Michelle says she's got an aunt who knows all the news before it's printed in the Sligo Champion. <laughs> she's not even from Sligo. Them stairs are like K2. Oh, feels like bone against bone. Well... I can either bankrupt myself for the old June Whitfield contraption, you know, the stair lift, or... And I'm presuming this is the good bit. Or, if you're after going home, which I suspect deep down you are, I'd keep a bit quiet about them hips if I were you. Why? I think you can get a better deal with a few carefully chosen words. I dare say I'm capable. Weren't you grumbling about that bedroom over there not so long back? If you can call it that. It's like a sea-facing room in a boarding house. So? So what? Oh, come on, Blanche, keep up. Like you're suggesting blackmail. Well, it's hardly blackmail, is it? Not in your capable hands. More like grey mail. Lick a paint and you might be persuaded. That's all I'm saying. I like you, Peter. I always did. Morning, Deirdre and I are concerned about your hips. Well, don't be. They're a lot better. Sorry? Fetch me a hula hoop and I'll show you. Up and down those stairs all day? Oh, they're a hop and a skip. I thought you needed Peter's help. No. But you were saying the other day that... I mean, all that talk about the stair lift. Stair lift? You'll not get me on one of those. <sighs> Well, listen, Deirdre's too proud to say this, but she misses you. Well, I don't miss that bedroom of mine. Don't you? Between Peter's stairs and that, the wallpaper's peeling off, the skirting boards are chipped, there's draughts of wind whistling in every direction, wind swept, that's what it is, and it's damp. And it occasionally rains in there. Oh, come on, Blanche. That's a ludicrous exaggeration. Be that as it may. <sighs> well, maybe we could make it a bit more comfortable. How so? Oh, I've got. You can take down the bunting if you like. 
I want an apology. Otherwise, you can turn round and go straight back again. I am sorry. Good. I'm renewing the mothballs in our wardrobe. They've had a right go at me John Lewis trouser suit. Would it have killed you to sound like you meant it? I did. But you've already agreed to redecorate. So then, he said... Is that a Deirdre's? I left mine at Peter's. It's musical dressing gowns. You could have worn Ken's kimono. Has he told you about my room? I heard. Yeah, we'll pick out some wallpaper this week. Mine is the casting vote. Naturally. I fancy some of that stuff with a velvety texture. I fancy seeing the Rolling Stones one day. Pardon? There's a thing about them in here. Hey, look at Jagger. I wonder what waste those jeans are. Still writhing around at their age. It's obscene. I'm going to make some cocoa. I don't know what he wants, then. Huh. Mm.